They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Try again with the arm here on second down. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Well, the advantage has certainly shifted to the defense as we began that third down play, and they found a way to foil it and pick up a first down. Third time's a charm, right? Two incompletions. Had to have it on third, and they got it. Yeah, they stuck with it, weren't daunted at all, and picked it up. He's going to let this one go deep. This is caught at the 20. It's a big one there for the Vikings. And even 40 yards. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that when both sides have a chance to get it, the receiver or the guy covering him. But I think the odds actually are in favor of the offense. They can see the ball coming oftentimes before the defender can get his head around. So I think that really goes to like 70-30, and they should be able to go up and get it most of the time. And he got it there. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. And how about the dime look here? Six DBs on third and inches. Daring them to run the ball. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and in inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now they'll run it on the toss. Trying to turn the corner, but he's going to be stopped right near the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Flushed out right. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. It's their quarterback taking it in from seven yards away. And the Vikings take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. On 
second down, here's Rodgers. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. On third and long, it's Rodgers. Dropping it off for starts. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. So on fourth down, the call's out for Tim Maste to punt it away. Taken from just outside the 30. But it wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, and now out comes Minnesota. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Looking for his tight end on the corner, it's complete. 23 yards on the play. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. On first down, he'll drop to throw. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. 13 yards there on the pickup. And it'll be a Minnesota first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there from 17 yards out. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him down. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And with a new rule, that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20. Here comes this Green Bay Packer offense again. It has so much made of the slow start they've had to the year. Yards per game, points per game, both the lowest in Aaron Rodgers' tenure as a starter, yet they're four and two. Yeah, at one point it was a compliment to have people criticizing them because the bar was so high. Now it's something they just want to shake off and start playing to their level and get back to being that Green Bay offense. But as you said, they're four and two. So if they're four and two this way, wait till they figure it out. They've got a chance to really elevate their game. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And that's incomplete. A quick pivot here to discuss something you and I were going over this morning, and that's Miami. Uh, Jay Ajayi, two straight games over 200 yards, and they're really starting to come into life. Won their last two games. They're now three and four. And a little note of melancholy, though, 
Arian Foster, who signed with Miami this past offseason, announced his retirement. Had a great career, especially with the Houston Texans. Yeah, sad to see him go. Had an NFL rushing leading year. Also had four Pro Bowls under his belt. Give him nine on the play. And just like that, it's third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Rodgers going to throw. That's complete to Cobb. 15 yards through the air on a first down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Rodgers now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Hey, well, we have a second. Let's give that interesting stat that our crew dug up for four and three versus three and four teams. 48% of teams that start out four and three make the playoffs, just 17% of three and four squads. That's almost daunting, isn't it? But let's take a quick look at it with the teams that are four and three and three and four. So if you're four and three, some teams that I'm really keeping an eye on towards making a playoff drive, Pittsburgh. When they get Big Ben back, look out. They're extremely dangerous. And another one may surprise you, the Detroit Lions. They've won their last three in exciting fashion, and Matt Stafford's playing really, really well. At the three and four teams, San Diego. They were so snake bit early. Now they've won two in a row. Keep a strong eye out for them. And last but not least, Cincinnati. They know how to win. It's time for them to crank things up. And again, it's Rodgers. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And the offense lining up first and ten. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So this will be the ninth play on this drive. Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. And this is going to be incomplete. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Rodgers now on third and goal. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. And Crosby puts it through. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy. But you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that.